So I have been reading a lot of fiction lately. I actually haven't finished a nonfiction book in a while. For some reason, I'm just very much in a fiction mood, which has been good because I have been trying to get into writing and I feel like reading fiction really helps with writing fiction. But anyway, there have been some really, really fantastic books that I've come across lately that I wanted to chat about. So I'm going to start by talking about two fiction books that I am currently reading. The first is Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie and the second is The Divine Comedy by Dante. Then I'm going to talk about a fiction book I just finished which is Paradise Lost by John Milton. So the first novel I want to talk about is Midnight Children by Salman Rushdie. So I actually have all of this footage for a reading vlog that I filmed last month and a lot of the footage is around one of the novels I read which was The Satanic Verses by Salman Rushdie. I know that that is a very controversial novel so I've chosen to not talk about that until I have a better understanding of Islamic history, the Prophet Muhammad, the Quran, just Islam in general. And if you are not aware, The Satanic Verses was a book that was written in 1988 by British Indian author Salman Rushdie. I believe he was born in India, but he did move to England for high school and undergrad. He studied at Cambridge. And this book, when it came out in 1988, sparked a number of protests in India, Pakistan, England, and in February of 1989, the Ayatollah of Iran, who at that time was Ayatollah Khomeini, issued a religious decree, which is also called a fatwa, calling on Muslims to execute Salman Rushdie and everyone involved in the publication of the Satanic Verses. An Iranian religious organization also offered a bounty of $1 million for the murder of Salman Rushdie, and from what I remember, if it was an Iranian who killed him, they would actually receive $3 million for his murder. Obviously because of this, Salman Rushdie was forced to go into hiding and he lived underground for a number of years under a pseudonym, a combination of two famous authors, Joseph Conrad and Anton Chekhov. And he actually has a memoir under that name, which one day I hope to read. Just to give you a little bit of a chronology of some of the events that took place. So in June of 1989, Ayatollah Khomeini died. Later in June, a Lebanese man blew himself up in a hotel in West London, preparing a bomb to kill Salman Rushdie. In July of 1991, the Japanese translator Hitoshi Igarashi, who was a professor of Islamic culture, was murdered at a university where he worked in northeast Tokyo. Also in July of 1991, the Italian translator of the book was attacked and badly wounded. And two years later, in 1993, the novel's Norwegian publisher was shot and seriously injured. So, overall, tons of controversy surrounding that novel and anyone who was involved in its publication. And I mean, the passage of time hasn't really changed things. I know in the 90s, I think it was 1997, the president of Iran said that they would no longer be enforcing the fatwa or encouraging anyone to kill Salman Rushdie. Nevertheless, in 2016, 40 state institutions in Iran pulled together $600,000 to add to the bounty for the execution of Salman Rushdie. And as many people know, recently Salman Rushdie was attacked, resulting in the loss of one of his eyes. So overall, the novel is very controversial and I just don't feel like I'm in a place where I can really talk about it. But I was interested in exploring more literature by Salman Rushdie. He has a very unique writing style and I was just very interested to understand what his influences were. And so I wanted to read another work by him that was much less controversial. So I picked up Midnight's Children, which is the book for which he won the Booker Prize. And there also was an award, which essentially was an award for the best Booker Prize winner of the last 25 years and Midnight Children won that award also. So, I'm currently reading that much less controversial book by the same author. 
I'm not very far into it, but so far I am really enjoying it. So a lot of Salman Rushdie's novels involve magical realism. And that's a genre that I actually have never enjoyed. I talked about it a few videos ago. But Salman Rushdie does it in a very different way and in a way that I actually do really like. I think because his magical realism involves spiritual aspects. So his magical realism is tied a little bit more to Islam or some sort of religious tradition. I think the spiritual aspect is what I enjoy and find quite interesting. I have also fallen down such a huge Salman Rushdie rabbit hole and have just tried to read as much as possible to really understand who this man is. He grew up in a Muslim family, but he himself is not religious. And Rushdie is essentially trying to use novel as a vehicle in order for the reader to experience a spiritual experience similar to what the mystics within Islam experience within their faith. I do get that feeling when I'm reading his books. They're very immersive. When I read his books, I have to like put my phone to the side because I just want to get fully consumed into this world that he's created. And I can't remember the last time I've experienced that sort of feeling when reading a novel. It definitely does feel like a spiritual experience or like a journey. So I'm really excited to really give Midnight's Children my full attention. So for both of his books so far, they both are really good. And they both are books that I could sit down and read, but the narrators have been excellent and it just takes the immersive experience to another level, listening to it as an audiobook. I also have borrowed an ebook from my local library and this is the edition that they came up with for the 40 year anniversary of this book. It has a really amazing introduction and in it, Rushdie talks about some of his influences for creating this novel. And I just want to read them because I think it really gives you an indication of where he was going with this novel, what his influences are, and it gives you an idea of what the novel feels like while reading. So he was influenced by the Russian novels of the 19th century, and he lists Crime and Punishment, Anna Karenina, Dead Souls, books that Henry James has referred to as large, loose, baggy monsters. He also was influenced by great English novels of the 18th and 19th centuries, and he lists Vanity Fair, Little Dorit, and Bleak House as a few. He also was influenced by modern masterpieces such as The Tin Drum, 100 Years of Solitude, and Catch-22. And then he was also influenced by epics of India. And then finally he was influenced by India's oral narrative tradition. And I'm just going to read a quote. So Rushdie refers to this narrative tradition as a form of storytelling in which digression was almost the basic principle. The storyteller could tell in a sort of whirling cycle, a fictional tale, a mythological tale, a political story, and an autobiographical story. And Rushdie says that he loved that multiplicity could be so captivating. And I would definitely say that reading his work feels like that. It feels like an epic, it doesn't even feel like a novel, and I know for Midnight's Children it's based in India and really deals with India's independence. In the introduction he talks about language and how he was very intentional with the language that he was choosing to use in this novel. He talks about how within India there's a mixture of different languages and he really wanted to make that part of his novel so you really feel like you are in India when reading it. And just to quote again from the introduction, Rushdie said that he was on a quest to write in an English that wasn't owned by the English. I set out to write an Indian English novel. And that's the feeling that you get. You get an epic, you get what I would consider to be a classic, but it's definitely from another voice. It's not from the Western typical voices we hear when we think of classics. And just tying in all of the aspects of Indian culture, Bollywood, it's just a very vibrant novel that allows you to learn about a time in history, another culture, while using the novel as a vehicle for what honestly feels like an immersive experience. I can't even put it into words, but Rushdie is an excellent storyteller. And despite all the controversy, I still think that he is definitely 
someone worth giving a read. The next novel I am reading is The Divine Comedy by Dante. I've talked about The Divine Comedy I feel like a few times on my channel so I'm not going to get into it too much. I'll just link the videos that I talk about it in more detail down below. But last year I read The Inferno which I really liked and had every intention of finishing The Divine Comedy and I just didn't do it. So like this is the year that I finally finish it. This book follows this person named Dante who essentially goes through the different levels of the afterlife within Christianity. So first he goes through the inferno or hell, then he goes through purgatory. People who, you know, do love God and have chosen to be Christians but still have some parts of themselves to work on, they go into purgatory and I don't really know yet like what that looks like like I don't know if they're like suffering in purgatory or what it is but it's essentially like a, a place of like refinement before you can go to heaven and correct me if I'm wrong because I could be completely wrong I have not read this book yet and then the third book is Paradiso or Paradise and that is like again interesting I think like different levels of paradise when I was growing up and like going to church I always thought of like heaven as being like one place so I am two-thirds of the way through the Inferno right now and really liking it. I am listening to it as an audiobook and I'm listening to a more modern translation. I found some of the translations that use older language to be really tedious to get through so I'm listening to a more modern one so I just sort of understand the ideas that Dante is throwing out there. It's still really beautiful, but definitely I'm sure the language isn't as poetic. But I just want to understand the story and then I will go back and like read a more classical edition and work through it that way. I will also say I am reading it in such a way that I essentially am skimming the whole thing using a technique that's talked about in Mortimer Adler's book, How to Read a Book, which I actually finally have a copy of. I can't reach it, it's over there, but I finally have a copy of that book. And in Adler's book, he talks about, for really challenging texts, he recommends just like picking up the book and plowing all the way through, not stopping to understand everything. And especially with an epic poem like The Divine Comedy, where within each sentence there's so much information. Like I could take one sentence of that poem where he mentions a few people in Italian history and I could spend 30 minutes just trying to understand that one sentence. So I'm like, that's not a good use of my time. Let me just go from beginning to end as quickly as possible, understand the whole story, and then go back and go slower through the cantos or the books that are more interesting or like are speaking to me a little bit more. So the goal is to try and finish the Inferno today and then start on purgatory tomorrow. I also will be using some secondary resources to help me with understanding it and those will probably take me a little bit longer to get through. Like I'm very well aware that I will not completely understand every aspect of the epic poem by the time I've finished but I want to at least understand like from beginning to end where it goes and then figure out what areas I want to drill in to a little bit more. Initially my plan was to finish the whole Divine Comedy this long weekend because it's Thanksgiving here in Canada. I'm not sure if that's realistic because I do have Thanksgiving plans, but we'll see. I'll keep you posted. Okay, and then the last book I want to talk about is a book that I just finished reading this week, which is Paradise Lost by John Milton. And I have a copy here. I will say, did not love this book, really did not love it, but I think the message of it is really interesting and I'm glad I read it. Like it's a book that I'm very happy I got to and I understand. Will I ever read it again from beginning to end? Probably not. And it's also really interesting because of who the characters are. So one of the main characters is God, one of the main characters is Satan, you also have Adam and Eve, and then a bunch of angels. What I think is really interesting about this work is it essentially is Milton's way of trying to justify God's way to man is how he describes this book. It's Milton's view of Christianity. But what makes it even more fascinating is because it's in dialogue form, you get loads of different perspectives. So seeing Satan's character, Satan's justification for why he did what he did, I actually found the most interesting character to be Eve, which I was not expecting. I was like, is Milton a feminist? Maybe. Because Eve is a very subversive character. She is a character who is continuously questioning everything 
questioning the hierarchy that God has created in this Garden of Eden, questioning the nature of free will. Like she is a very complex character, which I was not expecting, but I did enjoy. So my absolute favorite chapter was book nine, which is the actual fall. And so within that you see Satan becoming a serpent, and then you see Adam and Eve having a conversation where Adam is essentially saying, we should stick together, Eve, we need to go out and work. And if we go and work individually, there's a higher risk of us being tempted than if we are together. And Eve says that no, if my ability to withstand temptation requires us to remain together, then how do I actually have free will? Interesting question, right? And I also found really interesting Milton's exploration of the hierarchy within the sexes because when you first read sort of the description of the Garden of Eden, as a woman, you feel like, oh, hold on, this still feels like a patriarchal society and like, isn't Eden supposed to be a utopia? And there was actually a fairly interesting exploration of that in book four, in which you see Adam explaining to Eve the hierarchy and how she was made for him. The way in which Milton describes Eve's submission to Adam I found quite fascinating because it's not what one typically thinks of within Christianity of like man tells woman to do this and she just submits. Milton tries to make it so that the submission is like optional. I don't know if I fully buy it but he tried. I'll give him that. He tried. And then within book nine you see Eve again questioning this hierarchy and questioning the idea that they have free will yet if they are not together they will be tempted and they will sin. And she's like, well then do we really have free will if we have to go about doing all of these things together? Interesting. So because it's a dialogue, you don't really see Milton's actual idea or his, I guess like theology, his understanding of Christianity because you're seeing different people's perspectives. But the book raises tons of ideas and I now want to go about reading different experts' um, analyses of the book. So I'm currently working through this lecture series by Yale University, which is on YouTube. And I believe the professor's name is John Rogers, but if that's not his name, I'll include his name in the description box. And it essentially goes through all of the different books of Paradise Lost. It's been pretty good so far. I have been enjoying it. I also plan to read A Preface to Paradise Lost, which is by C.S. Lewis. I haven't really read a lot of C.S. Lewis's works of fiction, but I find his works of nonfiction really fascinating, and I'm really excited to jump into this. So that's how I plan to sort of deepen my learning and my understanding of this book, because with classics like this, you're not going to be able to get everything on your own just off of reading it. You do need to turn to the experts. So that is where I am going now, but so far I liked it more than I thought I would. How do I phrase it? The reading experience is really unpleasant, so by the time I got to the end I thought I was going to hate it, but I was like, you know what, that raised really interesting concepts and ideas. I didn't like the process to get there, but I am happy with the payoff of having finished this book. So thank you so much for watching. I didn't really want to make this super long. I just wanted to come and chat about some books that I'm really enjoying and loving. I will eventually do a reading wrap up. I just, I haven't done them for September because I don't know what to say about the Satanic Verses and I don't want to even touch it yet, but I will do some sort of reading wrap up soon because I have had the chance to read some really fantastic books. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. I especially would love to hear if anyone has read any of Salman Rushdie's works because I probably will read one of his books every month for the rest of this year because I really like his writing style. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, this channel is all about re-education and decolonizing the mind. I decided to go on a journey last year of decolonizing my own mind and I made this channel as a way to share what I'm reading and learning with the world. If you're interested in following along with me on this journey, feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.